Nonetheless, um, you do have a lot of materials on the e-board. Um, a lot of those you saw before when the School Mental Health Initiative, the group came forward and talked to you all about their concerns and the issues uh, related to mental health. Um, we're going to speak primarily to the policy today, um, but I do want you to look at the resolution. Uh, even though we're not bringing that forward as a resolution to the uh, board, um, it's significant in that the group itself, and I'm going to give you a little bit of history again in just to say, but the group itself felt that those issues and those components of that resolution were extremely important. Um, so, a little background again, most of you um, have been a part of this, but some of you are not. Um, about a year and a half ago, um, actually a little longer than that, um, Healthy Schools, Safe Schools, and the EC Division got together and, and just talked about what we were doing between the three divisions in the department concerning mental health. And, and the specifics of the issue um, were, were, was really about how significant a problem it was for all of us everywhere we went. Um, I'm the EC, state EC director, but I didn't walk into a district without someone approaching me relative to the concerns about mental health, either inside a specific school or across the system. And the three divisions basically in our conversation, um, we're seeing the same thing. So we talked a little bit to make sure that what we were going to do moving forward wouldn't be conflicting, so that we really tried to bring this together as a divisional, cross-divisional effort. Um, and then we set up a set of meetings, um, and in your packet, you've got a list of participants, and, and there's a good number of them in the audience again today. But you can see how extensive that list is and how um, much of an interagency and cross uh, discipline group it is. Um, it, we have parents, we have individual parents, we have parent groups, we have attorneys, we have school people, we have mental health people, we have uh, folks from DSS, we have folks from public health, uh, we have private providers, we have providers from the MCO, LME MCO network. Um, it is an extensive group um, and we've worked very carefully at um, the issue of mental health in the schools. And part of that product we talked to you all about when we came several months back was that we would come back again, we hoped, soon, with a suggested policy. And that's really where we are now. Um, and so this policy isn't in place. I just want to give a little bit of a, again, a caveat here. It's not here to compete with the LME, MCO, and the mental health programs that are, are in place. But it's here really to make sure that children who have mental health issues who are in schools do not fall between the cracks. That there is a way for us to get access to services, whether we do it within the context of the school or we do it in the, in the context of the environment and surrounding the schools, the community, bringing in the MCO, the LME, the MCO uh, service delivery models. But, but the key issue here and the key focus of this group was how do we make sure that we don't let those kids go without services. And so um, as I begin to walk through this, um, I'm going to specifically speak to the policy. I'm going to utilize some facts and things that come from the white paper and the executive summary, um, but primarily from the policy itself. So, one of the basic rationales, and I'm not going to read this, is that this is a serious issue. And Yates brought this up um, a while ago, specific to his own experience inside the schools and what people see day to day. Um, nationally, uh, in any given year, 13 to 20 percent of school-aged children have a mental health issue. North Carolina ranks 36 in the prevalency rate, so that's high. Um, that's not only in the prevalency rate, but in our ability to access services for those children. This is a real number of our 1.5 million kids, <coughs> over 302,000 um, in North Carolina will have a mental health disorder in any given year. Of that 300,000, 75,000 of them will receive treatment which means 75% of 
will not. Um, and so it becomes, a, a, this is a crucial piece that we're looking at. And again, as we've talked to the provider network and we've talked to family groups and focus groups around the state, it isn't, again, back to this thing of competitiveness and trying to start a different system. It's really about the fact that we don't have enough services. And we've got to figure out other ways to get to what needs to happen to help support these kids. Um, Again, just another basic rationale. It's complex, uh, requires integration um, to, to make it work. Um, I don't know if y'all remember, some of y'all were on the board uh, probably three years ago. Um, Alamance County came with a day treatment program, and they spoke to y'all about the program that they had in place. And it was an integrated program, school personnel, but working through an LME um, program to secure funds uh, through Medicaid to be able to bill for services so that they could actually pay for their clinical social workers. If you remember, they talked about specific kids who were in and out of the hospital. Um, they, were, they were significantly uh, engaged inside of an issue with, of mental illness. Um, but those kids were able, through that program, to go in and out of the hospital with smooth transitions and were able to graduate from high school with a diploma meeting all the requirements to go to a college and university. These kids that we're talking about are good, some of them are decent, good students that have significant issues and we've got to be able to supp supply that uh, support. Um, key issues there are also are parents. Um, on our group was uh, North Carolina Families United, which is a group that was started here in North Carolina that basically supports children with mental illness. We've got to be working as we do this process to make sure that we're, we're capturing those. In the context of, again, uh, whole school North Carolina, whole school, whole community, uh, the philosophical piece here, we've got to have the integrated services working our way through the process to do what needs to happen. Again, it's got to be a community-based process. System of care um, is a huge model across the state that engages both school and all the rest of the community resources. We've got to keep talking about those kinds of things. And the last one is a rationale. Um, we, we've heard from um, Ellen and, and her report what it means to be, to ha if you have good mental health, you, you end up uh, with good improved outcomes. You also enhance the physical and psychological safety, and I think that's the key piece. Um, School-based mental health centers, if you actually have those, um, and, and that's a part of a model as we're looking at all the things that can be there, they already exist in our public schools, they're 21 times more likely to be used if they're at the school than any other type of mental health clinic. So if it's there where the kids can go and they feel safe and there is this enhanced uh, physical and psychological safety within the schools, they're 21 times more likely to be utilized than a regular mental health program. Um, again, I, I, I'm not going to, we've talked about this enough and I, the lead-in was perfect, but it is, as I said earlier, this integrated component and we really need to be looking at what is Whole, Scott, Whole Child in North Carolina which is now a, an integrated group, pretty much sponsored by members of the board, working with multiple other agencies to move ourselves forward. And, and this fits directly under that umbrella. Um, so, highlights of the policy. Um, what we're asking for is that every school and charter school, basically within three years from starting next school year, three years, make sure that all of their personnel, um, whether it's uh, licensed um, and certified personnel or just anyone in the school, that, that there's at least an awareness training that goes on for all of those folks so that everyone has some understanding of the basic concepts behind mental illness uh, what, what they're going to see, what they're going to need to do, and how they're going to be able to respond. 
We also need to, for our licensed and certified personnel, to go ahead and go further than that in looking at training around prevention and early intervention. Now, mental health first aid has been mentioned a bunch of times here today, and I'm going to mention it again. Um, that's one of those trainings that the department uh, under uh, Dr. Petrie Martin is really pushing to expand trainers in the state who would be able to go into school districts and train on this mental health first aid, which really does go to that point of awareness and prevention. So that's a huge piece. Another piece is PBIS, Positive Behavior Intervention and Supports. A good number of our schools already have that. Um, it's already there and we just need to enhance that and we can do that in the context of uh, MTSS, which um, basically is a, as y'all know, is a school improvement framework. Um, and we can look at that within the, con the PBIS, within that, that um, uh, MTSS framework and, and move ourselves forward. Um, we're also going to be looking at um, trying to create infrastructure and a stakeholder group stakeholder group we're going to pull forward to help us look at the various pieces that we can utilize and do uh, to develop materials um, at no cost, the things that districts are going to need. Um, the EC division is going to move some money around inside positions and actually pull a position that we will for the first several years hold um, as a support position to this, this um, policy if it passes. Um, to basically organize and make sure that there's someone following to, to guarantee that the things we're talking about within this policy are actually going to get done. We'll do that in, again cross-divisional inside the department, but, but we are going to put some, um, we're going to alter some resources to make sure that that can happen. Um, and, I, and as I said, I think that's going to be huge for us to make sure that we can carry that piece forward. Um, to do this, we really have to have a continuum of, of services. And what we're asking inside the policy is that each charter school and each school create a policy that basically spells out how they're going to work with mental health. And it doesn't mean that they have to do everything. It could be that they're working with their LME, MCO. It could be that they want to do some aspects of, of development of programming and services, or it could be a combination of both. No one is saying what that has to look like, but that there is a policy that says, as a school, this is what we're going to do to make sure that children get services that they need. Um, the three component pieces here are access um, to the continuum. We need to make that available to all students. We need to have an engagement. Uh, with the stakeholders and family and community providers, and we need to, in collaboration with the uh, LMEs and MCOs, work hard to make sure that we've got a means of accountability. Um, this is an important piece. It's going to require change, and unless we've got measurement, unless we've got data, we're not going to be able to see whether or not we're having progress. We can have a policy out there, but we're not going to be able to measure whether or not it's successful, not only from the mental health perspective, but what it does relative to the academics and, and children's attendance, their behavior, um, all the things that we know that are going to be impacted by that. Um, we're also going to help um, by developing model policies to be able to work with charter schools and public schools to um, push that out. And the last piece here um, is to look at building state and local capacity. How, how do we begin to uh, look at universal prevention? And I see this primarily as the, as the key piece for what we're doing. Okay. If we can be training staff and working with um, schools and school systems through PBIS, through MTSS, um, through mental health first aid, basically what we can do is really push the issue of a prime universal prevention and making sure that we do all that we can do to make sure that children don't step into those issues that Yates was talking about earlier and find themselves depressed, anxious, um, and um, not being able to move forward in school. We need to um, 
create uh, plans to uh, integrate social and emotional learning strategies across the curriculum. Um, we need to look at uh, understanding inclusion and the use of social emotional well-being uh, as learning strategies. Um, we need to improve access to uh, adequately trained school health professionals in North Carolina. Um, and basically what I'm talking about there is some of the things we mentioned earlier that we know we have shortages in and that social workers, counselors, school psychologists, those people who can be there so that it is again not just the teacher who's having to respond to these issues but making sure that we have capacity or are looking to build capacity to have those people available. Um, and we also need to incorporate um, staff mental health and wellness initiatives. We need to be doing what we can do even beyond what we're already doing to try to make sure that our teachers and our other staff, principals, um, and everyone are there, uh, or that we've got something there for them to help support them. Um, again, um, early intervention, treatment. Uh, we're not looking to be a primary treatment provider at school. But I'll take that, I'll show that example, I'll use that example again of the day treatment, where those were school licensed clinical social workers employed by the school, paid through uh, Medicaid dollars that were brought down through an LME um, that were actually helping to work and support those, um, those children. So those are things that we can look at in that treatment end, along with other things uh, with social workers and um, uh, our counselors and school psychologists doing that primary prevention primary prevention and early intervention as well. Can I, can I stop in there? We're getting very late on our time here, but um, the draft policy we have in our materials, and I know that you've asked, we, we need people, we need board members to weigh in and consider approval of a policy. And what is the time frame for that coming back to us for policy approval? Well, I mean, we're looking to, I mean, we're presenting it to you now as a policy, draft policy to be considered again in a month okay. um, for passing, um, hopefully, I consideration. I want people to feel like, you know, this is a lot of information. You've come to us before. We know this initiative's going on. But I, I would encourage people to look at the draft policy and provide you okay for that first team to feel that you have um, okay. lots of you at this table have lots of experience in that um, but this is a really important issue and I don't want to cut it short but I know that we're already well into your time more than you gave us um, but we do need to get this policy approved so and I, Maria I'm I don't think we're going to have time for a wrap up at the end does anybody have a question for Bill this is a very important issue, and I'm going to have to say something I haven't said all day, which is we also need to back all the way out to pre-K. Uh, absolutely. I mean, right now I've, I sit on a board that works with infant mental health issues, so zero to three. Yeah. Um, well, and especially as we're addressing yes. family issues and mental health. So and, and I just want to note one thing, and, okay. I, and I'll, I'll be brief, but we, we do right now look like we're – on Friday, I meet with um, program evaluation from the legislature on expansion of Medicaid. And I just want to bring that back around. I, I do think that that becomes an important part of this. Um, and, and it would be something that we could utilize not just for special education, but for regular education children as well. And that would help um, in all setting some costs with billing support around counselors, social workers, school psychologists, nurses. But those people who would help create that framework for, for mental health support in, in the schools. And those dollars are there. We just have to bring them back to the Just a quick question. Um, 